I would say that to me that means you know software or um, anything any product built exclusively in Africa by Africans. Welcome to the Built in Africa podcast, where we connect trailblazers of the African diaspora through the unifying language of tech. On this episode, we spoke with Delali Kanda, software developer at Everwage, a payroll and HR solution that is strengthening the trust between employers and their employees. Let's get into it. Although it's not the hottest sector in tech, payroll and HR solutions are essential. As manual payroll management increases a business's vulnerability to human oversight, incompliance, and fraud. Listen as Dalali shares why they're building Everwage. So the the whole thing was this. Um, As you said, not many people concentrate their efforts on that because one, it is actually very, very um, difficult to build and manage a payroll and HR solution. Mainly because mm-hmm. um, most of the time what happens is, let's say for um, every year, the Minister of Finance will come, mention a few things, change some laws around payroll and HR, change the tax mm-hmm. rates. So, I mean, you have to always be on, you know, on top of the game and updating, I mean, the, the, the most current uh, laws in place. Also, we went in for it because we have a wide target audience, for instance. I mean, any company can use HR and payroll or needs HR and payroll. So we can basically target any company we want, go and market to them and see how their response is. So we we, we went to Mm -hmm. a few companies and we saw, okay, so um, companies in the security sector, security companies, for instance, they Mm -hmm. have a high churn rate, for instance, right? They, They have a high churn rate. So therefore, they end up paying people who, who they're not supposed to pay. I mean, so, I mean, one thing was, yes, you have a wide target audience. You can basically sell to anyone. And also, the, another idea that came up was um, employee loans, for instance. If we can set up a, a platform, so basically the payroll is a platform on which you can build any solution you want. The software development process is filled with failure, uncertainty, and more uncertainty. Listen as Delali shares some of the biggest challenges he faced building Everwage. Okay, um, I think the biggest challenge is starting, right? You have no clue what you are going to do, how you are going to do it, whether it's going to work. I mean, all those things are there, those doubts are there. But then, yeah, the biggest challenge is starting. Another challenge is planning and implementing um, certain architectures that, for instance, I've never used um, the architecture where you, know, you have microservices communicating with each other through a message queue, for instance. I've never used it mm-hmm. before, so it was a new thing for me. So the whole thing is, uh, will it work? I mean, how, how stable will it, will it be in production? All these questions mm-hmm. which we asked in the beginning, but then with careful planning and um, implementation, every mm-hmm. stage of the way, I made sure that I tested it, especially with huge data, to make sure that it's stable, Otherwise, you will reach a point where, oh, okay, you made a mistake, you have to backtrack, find another solution. Mm-hmm. So all these things are uh, sort of, you know, you have doubts in your mind while it's going, but then you have to just, you know, soldier on and sometimes take the risk hope that it works uh, for the best. Another big challenge is um, code optimization, especially with mm-hmm. uh, if you have huge data sets, for instance. Um, we had a lot of issues with processing payroll for, Let's say I tried it out with like 5,000 employees. I mean, you're going to process payroll for each and every one of them. It's, it's a hectic process for the, the, the CPU, for instance. You have to optimize code in that sense to, if, if possible, do something in the background, you know, whilst a person waits when you're dying in the background and you notify them or optimize your code in a, in a, in a sense that a person has to, there has to be a time limit to which the code should execute. I mean, so one of the big challenges of software basically is how to manage huge data. 
as data grows, how does your software um, handle it? How does your software skill? But so far, so good. <laughs> we, we've been able to do um, some, some amount of huge data processing uh, in the software. With over six years of software development experience, Delali has much wisdom to offer. Listen as he shares tips for growing as a software developer. Um, I think one of the things that really helped me a lot was I had a mentor. The first company I went to, for instance, I was always asking him questions. If I had a problem, I always go to him. If um, he always always telling me about new technologies to learn, where the trends are going, mm -hmm. you know. So someone to, who has the experience, you know, mm -hmm. you always go to someone who has the experience to learn from him. Maybe following his footsteps, you know, in the path he's going. To, to, to also direct you because most developers get lost. Um, should I do back end? Should I do front end? Should I do mobile? Mm -hmm. if someone wants to learn all three, and uh, sometimes it's not too helpful because you end up going back yeah. and forth. So, I mean, if you have mm -hmm. a mentor, for instance, that you know, guides you in the process, it, it really helps speed up your development process. I think mentorship is one of the important things that junior developers should seek. And also, um, you shouldn't be afraid to learn. I mean, some people think, okay, I'm older than this person. I should know more than him. You know, no, no, you, you learn from each other. So, I mean, if you don't know something, you can just go here and teach you, learn from it, you move on. Like, for instance, when I went to um, Haptel, I didn't know React. So, when I went to Haptel, they gave me a project um, in React. So, I had to learn the React and build a project. You know, this young guy, he just finished his um, national service. So, he knew the stuff. He was using it. So, I went to him most of the time. I had an issue. I went to him. He teach me at least how he does it. So, I mean, these things are some of the things people should learn too. Another thing too mm -hmm. is discipline and time management. So, for instance, me, in my, my whole um, time at work, working for um, NTUC and Haptel, not once mm -hmm. have I ever been late. Not once have I ever had um, a warning letter or anything issued to me. So, Discipline and time management is also very important. Consistency, make sure your work is always top notch. Some people who mm -hmm. the work, their quality of work begins to decline along the line. It's, 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 you have to be consistent from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. That's also very important. And that's it for this episode. If you haven't already, Check out the full article on our website, builtinafrica.io, found in the description. And while you're there, subscribe to our newsletter so we may keep you up to date with the latest. But until then, keep building.